And shalom, shalom. I'd like to welcome everyone on the night. This is Elder T here in North Carolina. And tonight we're going to be touching on the subject, all bread is not good for your life. All bread is not good bread for your life. See, what you have before you on your screen, you have two different types of bread. And yes, donuts are bread when cooked with yeast. You have on your right, it's pleasing to the eyes, sweet, it's tasty. And on your left, you have bread, but it doesn't, doesn't look so good, but it's better for you. See, the bread on your left, if you look real close, it has seeds in it. It has seeds in it. So you know, as it says, the seed is the word of God. So in that bread right there, that's on your left, those little seeds, those are seeds of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, truth, righteousness. If you get the illustration that's being brought before you. But on your right, that's not so good for you. You eat that, you, your blood pressure grow up. Your blood sugar rises. You gain weight, calories, all the bad things. But those of a healthy mindset, would pick the bread on the left. But those that have a different type of attitude, that have a different type of appetite, not a healthy appetite, would pick the one on the right. See, tonight we're going to go into some of that. Hopefully I shouldn't be before you long. So I hope that you get the illustration that I'm trying to bring forth. This is Elder T here at KJBU here in North Carolina. All bread is not good bread. All doctrine is not a doctrine for life. So we're going to get right into it. So pick me up. In Sirach, chapter 23, we're going to go right to verse 17. It says, all bread is sweet to a whoremonger. He will not leave off Till he die. See, all doctrine is sweet to a hormone. That person that jumps in and out of bed with different spirits, different doctrines, different teachings. You heard that saying, you are what you eat. <coughs> Excuse me, because what you learn of, what you eat, 
it will either kill you or to give you life. See, we have a bad habit of going for what is tasty to our flesh and even to our spirit, to our spiritual and fleshly palate. And it says this right here. Watch this in Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 28. It says, Thou hast thou hast played the whore also with the Assyrians because thou was unsatiable. Yea, thou hast played the harlot with them like a whoremonger. And yet, could it not be satisfied? Our palate couldn't and is not satisfied enough with the word of God. So we want to go in after every doctrine out there. We want doctrine from this place. We want bread from that place. We look at it. We look from it from Christian books, Hebrews, camps. I'm going to listen to this preacher this day. I'm going to listen to that preacher that day. I'm going to listen to a camp this day. I'm going to listen to a non-denominational church that day. All these institutions of so-called learning. And they don't even use the book to feed you from. They teach the doctrine out of Blue Letter, the Book of Enoch, the Book of Jasper, the Talmud, Kabbalah, and we eat it all because it's so sweet to us. Because we have this thing that we're getting all this type of education, type of doctrine, type of understanding, type of wisdom. And it's not from Christ. It's not from God. And then Sirach says this, Sirach chapter 37, verse 29, it says, be not, be not unsatiable in any, in any dainty Thing. Be not insatiable in any dainty thing. In any pleasant thing, nor too greedy upon meats. The doctrine. And that's what we have done. We are never satisfied. We are never satisfied. Our understanding is never satisfied. So we're going just like a whoremonger after everything we can grasp to because we want to appear wise. We want to appear knowledgeable. We want to appear as if we know something. When all the information you need is in the book. The recipe for the bread of life is in the book, but we want the donuts. 
We want what's sweet. We want what is sweet, but is not good for us. It says this in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 20. Hell and destruction are never full. Because it's always with it. Hell has enlarged itself. It's never full. It says what? So the eyes, the understanding of man, man or woman, are never satisfied. We want what is sweet. We want what is pleasurable for that for that palate. And we fail to realize, as I said, that what we need, not what we want, what we need is in the book. Isaiah 34 and 16 makes that clear. He said, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. And no one of these shall fail. The book is not going to fail you. So why are you looking to learn all types of bread, all types of doctrines and teachings? Of un Why? Of all types of doctrine. Why? Because you're a whoremonger. Do you know that a lot of these preachers and teachers, they actually conduct their messages based on the commentaries of the Blue Letter, the Book of Enoch, the Book of Jasher, like I said, the Talmud, Kabbalah, Concordance. Do you know that? So many of those so-called teachers don't even come out the book. So that makes their bread not only common, it clearly shows that it's not from above. It's of the same belief. That's why they push the Trinity so much. That's why they push... Jesus is God. It's all in vain. It's all in vain. And it has no profit. And it says this over in Proverbs. Proverbs 27 verse. We don't go to. We don't go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew. Said it's all in vain. Let's go to Matthew. Christ touched on that. Matthew 15, verse 9. It says, But in vain do they worship me. In vain do they worship me. Teachings for doctrines and commandments of men. It's all in vain. No profit at all. Because you think you are learning something of God when it's coming from a man that does not have the understanding nor the wisdom. They have evil understanding. In Proverbs chapter 23 says this very clearly. Proverbs 23 and 6. It says, it says this right here. It says, eat, learn thou not the bread of him that have an evil eye, evil understanding. Neither desire thou his dainty meats. And that meets his bread. He's not talking about steak. He's talking about bread, doctor. It's evil understanding because what? He will not come out of the book. He will not come out of the book.
because it's sweet. It looks good. It's pleasant to the eyes. Yet, it's saying the whole time it's not good for you. Because it's the type of bread that is full of deceit, lies. Proverbs 20, verse 17 says this right here. It says, Proverbs 20, 17, the bread of deceit, of deceit is sweet to a man. But afterwards, his mouth shall be filled with gravel. You know what gravel is? Those, those that, that, that comes from the ground. Those rocks, those pebbles. Because it has no profit. It has no profit in your life. It has no profits in your comings or your going. Because we fail to come to the realization that sound doctrine, that bread that was on the left with the seeds in it, that's what's good for us. That's will take you from this life to the next life. That's that bread, that doctrine of truth that's going to take you from this life to the next life. Like I said, you saw the seed. You saw those seeds. Wisdom. You saw a little seed of knowledge. You saw seeds of understanding. Wisdom. Truth, righteousness. That's what's good for you. But we don't want that. We don't want that. We want, we want what, what's it's going to itch our ears. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. And it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall their heat to themselves ha having itching ears. Heat to themselves teachers having itching ears. Verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. No, give me the donut. Give me the donuts with the with the glade. Give me the donut doctrine. Don't give me the healthy, the whole, the, the, the grain, the bread with the grain, the grain, the healthy bread. Don't give me that doctrine. Tell me what I want to hear. That's why is the truth, doctrine of truth, bread of truth is so hard for people to eat because the spirit that is in them don't want them to learn them. So they're going to have an option. That's why it was an option on the screen. Which one would you choose? Which one is healthier for you? Which one is going to not give you much calories? Which one is not going to raise your blood pressure, your blood sugar? You eat the donuts. You eat the donuts. Now you got... Thousand more calories, so now you got to walk an extra two or three miles to even burn off what you already ate. 
but you eat the good bread. The good bread, you can you can make a sandwich out of it, throw you some roast beef, a chicken salad sandwich. You can do some more things with that bread. But with the donut, grab you a cup of coffee and go to town. Because our spirit, our flesh wants what is dainty. We want that. We want the preacher to tell us, quote Romans 10 and 9 and I'm saying, tell me that God loves the sinner but hates the sin. Tell me there's a trinity. Tell me Jesus is God. Tell me that Jesus came and took away and did all the law. Turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables, unto lies. That's what we have done. That's where we that's where we are right now. The moment they put their two cents into what is good, then it becomes polluted. The moment they learn, call themselves being studied in the book of Enoch and that book and this book and that book. Then they now they seeking glory of man. Now they on YouTube teaching this and teaching that. I know this book. I know that book. Oh, I have so much wisdom, so much knowledge, so much understanding. Fail to realize that all they have to do is stay in the one book. And yeah, I wish I touched on that. John 7 and 18 touched on those that will seek their own glory. 7 and 18 says what? It says, He that speaketh of himself speaketh of his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. I studied this book. I know about Torah. I know about the Tammuz. I know about the book of Enoch. I know about this. I know about that. And they're going to give it to you. They're going to give it to those who desire that. They're going to feed it to those that do not want sound doctrine, that word that came down out of heaven. Because they seek their own glory. They seek of themselves. Because that's what they do. Because what they do, they 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 brag, they boast, that's what they do, because they seek their own glory because of the books and the knowledge that they say that they claim they have. Second Timothy. Chapter three, verse two says this. It says what? It says men shall be what? Lovers of them own selves. They should be lovers of their own selves. Proud, 
covetous, boasters. You see that? Blasphemers. That's what they do when they when they want to feed you the sweet doctor, the sweet bread, because we all those that want eternal life should be seeking after the good, the good bread, the good doctor. We should all be seeking and wanting that hollow bread, that sanctified word. That's what we should be seeking out. That's what we should we should want. Because it says this right here. First Samuel. Chapter 21, verse 4. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under my power. And that common bread is the same belief, the same faith, the same type of teaching of the world. But there is hollow bread. You see, that's what the priest said. There is hollow bread. It's sanctified. It's holy. Is set apart. That's the bread I got for David, but my beloved it says, providing the young men have kept themselves at least from women, from spirits. So we know that Christ, we know that Christ is the high priest. So we see the We see the similitude here. We see how it's being laid out where we can understand it. Hebrews 3 and 1. Let me, I gotta, I'm going to show it to you. That way we all on the same page. Hebrews 3 and 1. Wherefore, holy brothers, partakers of the heavenly calling, this should be highlight. Wherefore, holy brothers, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ's salvation. So we know that Christ, he's going to give us that hollow bread, that bread that is pure, clean, unpolluted, undefiled. That's why he said in John. That's why he said in John chapter 6, verse 48. He said what? He said, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna, did learn manna in the wilderness and are dead. This Verse 50, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that 
a man or woman may learn thereof and not die. Because we know that that bread that came down, that's the doctrine of life. Let's go to Sirach. That's the doctrine of life. That which came down. Remember that almighty word leaped down from heaven. Like a fierce man into a land of destruction. But what does it say? It says this. He said what? The knowledge of of the commandments of the creator is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit the works of the tree of immortality. Because we know that if he's saying that he's life, if the bread that he's coming is life, he's going to feed us with the bread of life. So we know that as I showed you earlier, that is going to have that truth. It's going to have that knowledge. It's going to have that wisdom. It's going to have that understanding. It's going to have all those grains in that bread. It's going to have all those grains in that bread. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 12. And it says, For wisdom is a defense and money a defense. But, however, the excellency of knowledge is, is that wisdom giveth life to them that have. Wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Because we know this. We know this in Proverbs 4. We know it's a principal thing. Proverbs 4 and 7. He said what? First five. Let's start first. It says what? He said, get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words, what? Of my mouth. So this is going to come from his mouth. This is what's going to come down. Verse six, forsake her not, and she will, she shall preserve thee. Love her, promise her, and she shall keep thee. Verse seven, for wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding. You can't get understanding out of other books. You can't get understanding from man's wisdom. You can only get this life, this bread of life, 
from him. The giver of life. The giver of life. That's where we're going to get that life from. Remember, he's the God of the living and not the, not the God of the dead. So he's the giver of life. So he's the one that's going to give you that, that hollow bread, that true bread. Because it says this in Sirach. Because he's going to rain it down upon you. Sirach chapter 1 verse 19. And it says this. It says, wisdom raineth down, skill and knowledge of understanding, standing. And exalted them to Honor that hold her fast. See, our life, our life is not dependent, nor shall it be founded on man's wisdom. So for us to go for all bread that is sweet, to a whoremonger. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. That bread is not bread of life because it said he will not leave off till he die. That means there's no life in it. There's no salvation in it. There is no deliverance in that doctrine of men. The wisdom of man, the bread they give you, it has no life in it. So why are we so dependent on man's doctrine? Why are we so continually to use other books? And they feed you with the commentary and the private interpretation of those other books. And they have polluted God's word. Let's go to, let's, let's, we're still in Sirach, so pick me up at chapter 40. Sirach chapter 40, verse 29. And it's going to say this right here. Watch this. Watch what this says. It says, the life, the life of him that dependeth on another man's table is not counted, is not to be counted for life. Because Christ said, I am the bread of life. Why are you dependent on man? Why are we dependent on man's knowledge to feed us? Why are we dependent on their way, their private interpretation and understandings to feed us? The life of him that dependeth on another man's table, that's man or woman, is not to be counted for a life.
for he what polluteth himself with other men's meat. But a wise man, well nurtured, will beware thereof. Because in 1 Corinthians, it said not to eat at tables of devils. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. It says it right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. It says, ye cannot drink. You cannot gain knowledge. You cannot drink the cup of the creator and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table and the table of devils. Because he polluted himself with other men's meat. Because we know a little leaven leaven if the whole lump, but the whole thing is polluted. The whole thing is polluted. It says what? No, it says what? 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 6. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? You got to toss the whole thing in the garden. The moment they inject their wisdom, their knowledge, their understanding, their private interpretation of the scripture, their bread is, is polluted now. It has no value. It has no profit for your life. So what we have done, we are at the point where we're going to learn from this YouTube channel. We're going to learn from that YouTube channel. We're going to learn from this Christian preacher. We're going to learn from that Christian preacher. Because they say to themselves, oh, I love the word of God. No, you, you love. You love that sweet bread. So as a whoremonger, you will not leave off till you die. Because you choose not to learn, not to eat of sound doctrine. James chapter 3 said this. He said, he said what? He said, this wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. You're not supposed to eat the table of devils. Verse 16, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion in, a, in every evil work. Verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Let's go to Job 11 before I continue that verse. Let's go to Job 11. Job 11 and 4. Okay, there we go. For thou hast said, my doctrine is pure and I am clean in thy eyes. So we know that bread That Christ is going to give us is pure and is clean in our, in our, in our, in our eyes. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits. There's their fruit of the tree of immortality. There's their fruit, them works without partiality and without hypocrisy it's 
That's why he said, that's why the priest told David, he said, it's hollow bread. It's not common bread. It's hollow bread. It's not of the, it is not of the same belief. It is not of the world. It's not Christian bread. It's not Torah bread. It wasn't Kabbalah bread. It wasn't hermeneutics. It wasn't that type of bread. It was pure. It was sanctified. It was peaceable, gentle easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality, including without hypocrisy. It wasn't polluted. My brothers and sisters, I hope we can see the difference in the bread, in the doctrine, in the truth that we choose to learn and eat of. Make the right choice. There's no need to consume all this type of bread that's out here in the world. Don't be a whoremonger. Going after this doctrine, that doctrine, this doctrine. I gotta have this one, I gotta have that. Don't be greedy like a whoremonger. Let's get the bread of Christ. And let's eat on that. Let's be satisfied with that. Stay in the book. That's where the true bread is. Thank you so very much. And shalom.